സുധീറെ തുടങ്ങിയാലോ ഹലോ ഡോക്ടർ ലിബു ഹലോ ആർ യു ഹിയർ ഇൻട്രോഡക്ഷൻ ഫാദർ ജോളി ആർ യു ഹിയറിംഗ് ഐ എം ഹിയറിംഗ് we can start okay okay so let us start the program a very warm good morning to all of you christ college autonomous iriyala kuda is once again welcoming you to the webinar series from the physics department the department is celebrating its diamond jubilee the inauguration was over in the last month by the webinar on far field optics by dr paul arbach from netherlands and this is the second one today we are going to hear about <coughs> super capacitors by dr libu manyakel <coughs> so my duty is to welcome you all my name is shaju kwai i am the vice principal and head of the department of physics and on behalf of all i am going to welcome the president of our meeting webinar father jolly andrews he is the key person behind the all the programs of the college and uh, father jolly also belongs to physics department he is the principal of the college and i welcome father dr jolly into this webinar thank you. welcome father okay thank you sir thank you now i will welcome our resource person dr libu manyakel first of all i thank him for our invitation and uh, being ready to present the webinar and going through his bio data or uh, cv it is a wonderful cv if i read uh, i present all the cv it will take five, five more than 5 minutes so <clears throat> i am not uh, going into the details dr lebu basically from kerala who completed his bsc from malabar christian college under calicut university and did, did his post graduation in st stephen's college uravur and mg university mahatma gandhi university and did his phd in institute of electronics institute of electron technology from poland and he has visited many countries two many countries say and uh, occupied uh, many research positions and he is a visiting researcher in many countries also he has got a lot of projects and also he awarded with many prestigious awards he was the former mary curie fellow and he is also a member of many professional bodies also has a lot of teaching and project assisting phd supervising etc he is uh, he has also industrial collaboration with the many industries and also have many international collaborations also many uh, very large number of publications and uh, best publication award for one year most cited uh, paper was his uh, <coughs> i think during 2019 so a very eminent resource person and i i felt the uh, a noble prize feeling 
by seeing this biodata he is going to present today a very novel topic about super capacitors we know what is super conductivity so the word super is very famous in among physicists today he is going to speak about super capacitors and i am not going into the details he will start from the basics and into the and will finally go into the uh, research areas and on behalf of everybody present in the meeting and on behalf of the christ college management staff and the students i welcome dr libu into this webinar welcome sir thank you uh, thank you dr shajjo a wonderful and now, nice introduction okay welcome sir now i i welcome all the participants from all over the world to we, we have too many participants of more than 500 so i welcome each and all of you to this webinar and i uh, encourage you to take maximum advantage about this topic i welcome each and everybody into this webinar and i also welcome the host dr sudhir sebastian who is hosting this program and uh, dr savior joseph who is the convener of this program and uh, once again i welcome all the faculties students uh, into this webinar thank you thank you very much now father jolly dr jolly antros will uh, do the presidential address over to you father father please okay is it ready okay am i am i audible clear yeah yeah okay, audible okay respected dr libu majnekel the uh, the resource person who will be addressing us about the wearable energy storage today dr k y shaju the vice principal and uh, hod of the physics dr savia joseph the convener of today's program and dr sudhir sebastian who is hosting this program and all the faculty members the research students who are joining from the different parts of the world and my dear friends i'm very happy to note that this is the second international webinar that has been conducted by the department of physics as a mark of the diamond jubilee celebration of the department as we know the christ college started in 1956 by the devamada province of kamalates of mary immaculate an indigenous religious congregation founded in 1831 by saint kuria kosilias chavra who himself is a saintly priest a versatile genius who saw education as a tool of liberation and development Christ College a minority institution is dedicated to Christ and has as its motto GB the Prabha which means the light of life and at present the college has 27 UG programs 16 PG programs and 11 departments are having PhD research guides and also having 21 certificate programs and perhaps hosting the maximum number of students in Kerala at present 3860 college has also entered into mous with the university of sulu land south africa leibniz institute for applied geophysics germany and i would say a few words about the department department is celebrating its diamond jubilee uh, we started the bsc program then the msc program 25 years before and the research 10 years before and in this special occasion when we are having this second webinar second international webinar here also we especially remember the giants of our department who worked very hard in order to make our department a renowned one perhaps in the national scenario of india so i especially mentioned them and i also want to especially mention about a word about of our research which we are having now we are having around 13 research students and having the research in meta material sciences simulation studies opto electronic devices organic solar cells superconductors uh, semiconductor thin films uh, nonlinear optics and spectroscopy and uh, we have got around 196 publications 
and 130 paper presentations four have submitted phds and uh, five phds we have awarded here and also especially remember uh, all who are doing inter all who are doing very ingenious research in that field now i'm very happy to note that we are today speaking about the topic the topic of the next generation energy storage wearable energy storage system and we have got uh, one of the renowned person who can speak about this uh, speak about this subject has won the Mary Curie Award, Dr. Libu Manyekel from the Research Associate from the James Watt uh, from the University of Glasgow in the United Kingdom. And uh, we are very happy and we are very enthusiastic to learn about this wearable energy storage system here. So have everyone have a wonderful day, wonderful day of physics. Let us grow together by sharing the new knowledge, especially this new knowledge which are coming from the supercapacities, a wearable energy storage system as a supercapacities. Uh, hope everyone will have a wonderful day, wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful day today. Uh, may God bless you, everyone. Have a nice time. Thank you. Over to Dr. Libu. Dr. Libu, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Dr. Shahjo and uh, the Dr. Father Jolie and the convener and uh, my friend Mevin Vincent uh, to give me a wonderful opportunity to speak about uh, my work in this webinar. Uh, it's really, uh, I'm really happy uh, to present my work and uh, I believe uh, now we are living in uh, such a condition where we are living with uh, tension, fear regarding this corona situation. So, uh, I hope everything will come better soon. Um, maybe we can start our work. Uh, before going to start in, in details, as already uh, mentioned about my work, thank you so much for that, Dr. Shadju. Uh, yeah. Before going to discuss about my work, I am I'm currently working as a research associate in University of Glasgow, one of the best research group called the Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technology Group, best group. Uh, it is uh, work. It is uh, the, this group is mainly focusing on uh, flexible electronics under uh, supervision of Professor Devendra Dahia. Uh, we are working in uh, different fields, which is include mainly we are focusing on flexible electronics for wearable application, especially for robotics or healthcare. And also, we recently started. We are doing work in the area of water quality monitoring or environmental pollution monitoring. Uh, so these are the major four basic research theme in our group. Uh, we are uh, currently uh, almost 30 members in the group, uh, more than uh, 12 postdocs, 12 to 13 postdocs, and PhD students and master degree students. So basically, we are synthesizing nanostructures for flexible electronics, uh, different nanomaterials, zinc, zinc, nano, zinc oxide nanomaterials, silver, uh, sil uh, silver, uh, silicon nano uh, material, and this is for various applications, including electronic skin. And this is called a, one of the theme, nanostructures and uh, flexible electronics. And then another theme, uh, assistive robotics, where uh, we are working in the area of prosthetic hand, robotic hand, where to de de design sensors or electronic skin. Uh, also, uh, we working in the area of sensors and energy systems. Uh, this area I'm mainly concentrating uh, where electrochemical based sensors or biosensors, and then biotronics. These are the major four basic research theme in our group. Uh, you can uh, visit and I will share with you what is our uh, website related to this, uh, our major work. Uh, coming, to, uh, coming back to my work, um, I'm basically a uh, master degree in physics in India as mentioned. And then I did some uh, research work almost two and a half years in CMIT, uh, Trishore. Uh, it's one of the central government scientific institute you know maybe very well. Uh, Center for Materials for Electronics Technology under uh, Dr. Regu Natarajan and uh, Dr. S. N. Poiti. They, are, they are were my uh, research guide, guides and uh, I started there my research. Uh, my major research area is on electrochemical technologies. In electrochemical technology, as you know, it's a wide area. Uh, if you are planning to start any research, I think today there are many master degree students are there or PhD, just, they are just starting PhD students. So uh, if you are planning to start any research, uh, maybe with a chemistry or physics background, I believe 
uh, one of the best topic is electrochemical technology because it is connected to many many areas including uh, healthcare pollution monitoring energy uh, which is very important for our daily life so in this area you can see there are sensors energy storage energy generators corrosion electro electrolysis and many industrial applications also uh, here i am mainly working in sensors and energy storage in sensors i did my phd in electrochemical based ph sensors uh, and now i'm mainly working on electrochemical based ph sensors and energy storage such as super capacitor this is summary of my ph sensors i developed many ph sensors uh, including potentiometric thick film or for water quality monitoring or healthcare application and uh, i started with a non flexible version then uh, flexible stretchable and also a neck cloth Okay, so here today we can more discuss about uh, energy storage. Uh, as you know, in many of the sensors or many of the electronics application or uh, in especially in the wearable systems or uh, any applications, energy storage or powering the device is one of the critical factor. A suitable energy storage is very highly important for all this application for operational point of. So when we are doing any research in this area mainly we are before starting the research work we are focusing about these major four points what is technical impact in that work what is economic impact and social environmental because we, if you are planning to do any research we are just starting okay i want to publish some work it's not a good idea uh, when we started any research work we are thinking about how this is going to change or uh, based on this work is there any other work can be started and is there have any technical impact on an in future area or next generation of devices uh, and also uh, how cost uh, is it is it a big uh, fabrication not only in the fabrication in future how it is going to affect our economic economic and social when considering all this area as you know battery is one of the critical factor because uh, uh, it is in daily we, we, we know that in currently uh, there are almost 250 watt hour kilogram uh, if we say in words in quantity, quantity 250 watt hour per kilogram is the energy density of lithium ion based battery but in uh, the predict says that in future almost in 2035 we required almost 500 watt hour per kilogram uh, the reason is that the increasing number of electric vehicle many other application wearable systems so a huge impact is there in uh, in technical ways and also uh, when we're talking about the battery uh, the material which is fabricated uh, in the battery we know that it is contain a lot of toxic or environmentally unfriendly material uh, which can cause a serious environmental pollution and also these materials are when we're considering about the environmental uh, abundance uh, many of these materials are, uh, are, are reducing and also we are, are, we are finding alternative option to find a new material which can be used for fabricating such an energy storage devices. Uh, this is one of the recently reported Nature publication. Uh, they mentioned that uh, how the material cost which affecting on the, uh, the usage of material and also uh, where we need to focus more about in future. As you can see here that a manganese or zinc or iron-based battery or iron-based energy storage material have huge impact in future. As we're talking about the application point of view, uh, currently you can see that in electrochemical energy storage devices, especially uh, uh, in supercapacitors and everything, uh, recently used in electric vehicles. So when we're talking about oh, oh, what is the opportunity of supercapacitor uh, here, that that time. Uh, as you know in many of this battery battery it's one of the best energy storage device and i can say that there is no uh, competition with energy storage such as lithium ion battery because we are not reaching in that level of energy density but when the point of operation of a battery it have a limited life cycle when we require a huge power delivery it have a limitation to deliver a power uh, on, on in, a, in an instantaneous manner so here, the major focus is on supercapacitors and also uh, which can uh, uh, help the battery life in long term. In other ways, also in, when, when we are talking about uh, uh, wearable devices, battery can produce heat. 
So when we required a, uh, operating a wearable devices such as sensors or electronic skin, uh, which may cause, this battery may cause harmful to our uh, human uh, body. So we are now finding an alternative option, what we can use for such an application. There are many research area focusing on flexible or wearable battery. Uh, one of the issue is that the current battery, majority of, the, of them are non-flexible. So here, the focus is pointing towards what we can use for a wearable application. One of the best option is uh, supercapacitors. There are many energy generators which can be used as a wearable, including solar cell, uh, piezoelectric energy generator, nano generators, or a triboelectric nano generators. But for a storing point of view, uh, energy storage is highly critical. So here you can see one of the, our devices, which we use in a prosthetic hand. Uh, you know very well, I hope you know very well about the prosthetic hand, which, can, which needed to operate which, uh, when uh, in a high voltages, for example, uh, six to seven volt for a actuator. So uh, if we need to power such a devices, we need a wearable energy storage devices. Uh, currently batteries are heavy. So to overcome this issue, uh, uh, researchers are uh, searching for an alternative options. So, so when we are talking about a different kind of energy storage devices, uh, this is called a Ragon plot. Uh, I hope you know, some of you know. Uh, Ragon plot is that uh, it, it express what is the energy density and power density of uh, devices. So currently when we are talking about energy, energy storage devices, mainly uh, we, we, we know the capacitor, normal capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. Uh, it, have a, it, is a, it is a kind of energy storage devices, but the, the, the storage energy is very low. Uh, mainly it is using as a power electronics application, for example, to deliver a high power demand. For example, you can see in the bottom x-axis. Uh, then another, uh, another major energy storage device is the battery. As you can see here, the high energy demand, which have a high energy storage. So in between, if you required a quick power delivery and also a energy storage, there we are focusing more about the supercapacitors. So supercapacitor, uh, when, we, when we're talking about the basic principle of a supercapacitor, uh, you know very well about the capacitor. In a capacitor, there are positive and negative electrodes. In between, there is a dielectric. Uh, it's a piezoelectric material or whatever the material. Uh, that dielectric uh, area or thickness depends on the capacitance. So if you, are, if you required a, a huge farad capacitor, then the area of the dielectric you required very high or the thickness is very, uh, depends on the capacitance value also. So if you want to increase the power or the, uh, the capacitance of a capacitor, you need, to, you need to tune the dielectric medium. Here, uh, that is a, there is a limitation also. So this problem is solved by fabricating a new type of capacitor. It's called a supercapacitor. Here mainly the electrolyte acts as a dielectric thickness or a dielectric medium where the thickness between the uh, electrode electrolyte interaction is called electrochemical double layer formation considered as a, its dielectric thickness and it is very low thickness in the in terms of Armstrong level, uh, Armstrong level thickness or not. And uh, the area is here considered as the surface area of the electrode or how the electrolyte interact with the electrode. So depending on performance or a material or electrodes, uh, I, will, I will describe you what are the material there. The supercapacitors are classified into many uh, versions, mainly three versions as yes, you can see here. One is electrochemical double layer capacitor and next is pseudo capacitor and the third one is hybrid supercapacitor. Okay, uh, as I mentioned you, in capacitance, normally uh, you can see when, when we apply an electric field the, uh, between the positive and negative electrode, the, pol the polarized, it, it occurred a polarization and the, uh, pol during this polar moment, uh, there is an electric field generated as you know very well. But in electrochemical double layer capacitor, what happened is that in an electrolyte contain there are a lot of positive or negative ions. For example, if you are taking a um, KCL, uh, it contains K plus or Cl minus ion. Depending on polarity of the electrode, this positive or negative ions electrostatically attracted towards the electrode. This occurred electrostatic reaction is similar to capacitance, but these ions 
are at either diffused or adsorbed on the surface of the electrode. I will show you what is the electrode there. So mainly in electrochemical double layer capacitor, a non-faradic reaction occur and the, uh, and the material mainly electrostatically interacted. But when we are talking about a pseudo capacitor, uh, there is material is there, but that material may contain an ox oxygen valency vacancy, uh, such as um, manganese oxide or redox ruthenium oxide. So a redox reaction between the electrode and electrolyte occur, and it is called a Faradic reaction. And uh, there is a material uh, involved in redox reaction, so it have a huge energy density similar like battery. In hybrid supercapacitor, it's a combination of a electrochemical double layer capacitor and a pseudo capacitor. Either may be an asymmetric one or a symmetric one. I Means asymmetric one, a similar type of electrode, uh, like a, for example, a CUO in one side or CUO in another side. And in asymmetric one, it's like a, a battery type electrode material. So uh, in electrochemical double layer capacitor, mainly as I mentioned you, electrostatically ions are interacted on the surface of the electrode. So there is no electrochemical reaction occur. So the material have long life cycle. Due to lack of electrochemical reaction there, the energy density is poor, but it have a high power density. But when we are talking about a pseudo capacitor, due to this electrochemical reaction or redox reaction, the material involved in the chemical reaction, it it will it enable to high energy density. But due to this material reaction, the life cycle is reducing. So now researchers are trying to investigate how can we improve the life cycle of a pseudo capacitor by enhancing the energy density and the power density. And then it moves to hybrid supercapacitor in this version. So um, if you are planning to start a, uh, in master degree student, I think this is one of the interesting area or you can, uh, it's very important in the next generation also, if you want to develop a supercapacitor, whatever the parameter you need, mainly need to consider. So uh, it's like a two electrode system, as you can see here. In one electrode, initially, if we have a substrate, you can take any any PVC or PET, poly, uh, PET or textiles, PDMS, any substrate you can take if you are planning to about fabricating a flexible version. Okay, in the textiles, that is considered a textiles. It's a non-conductive. So there is a chemical reaction or electro electrode reaction, electrostatically interaction for ion interaction. You need there is a conductive path. Or if you have any reaction there. If you want to take uh, uh, the ions which is stored in the substrate, which is stored in the electrode, you need a conducting or a current path. This is called a current collector. So if you have a substrate, for example, let us take a uh, textiles, then you dipped this with a conductive material. You can use either graphene or a uh, carbon nanotube, whatever, or a, uh, you can paste an aluminum foil there or a nickel foil. So there is a substrate and a current collector. Then third version, as I mentioned you, the material, which is very important. If the material, depending on the type of supercapacitor, you can use carbon or a uh, polymers or a metal oxide. So depositing on the top of this current collector, uh, there is an electrode. Then fourth is an electrolyte. This depends on, electrolyte is defining our operating potential cell configuration and a chem or chemical reaction also. Uh, electrolyte, you can consider as any electrolyte like acidic, alkaline, organic, ionic, and even human sweat also that we recently found. Uh, for example, if you are taking an alkaline electrolyte like KCl, what happened is that in KCl, uh, there is a K plus or Cl minus ion. This K plus are moving towards, when you apply the potential, the K positive ions moving towards the negative polarity of the voltage electrode and then a separator this separator uh, you have now two electrode in between there is a separator and there is an electrolyte so what happened is that when you apply a potential this positive or negative ions diffused through the membrane that semi that separator and attracted on the surface of the electrode and then finally you have a, a insulator and a pdmx or ecoflex whatever you can material take your material as a insulating or a uh, uh, packaging material. This packaging also critically influence on the life cycle of the supercapacitor and also performance. So basically these are the six parameters 
if you are planning to take uh, fabricate any supercapacitor which you require. Once you have all these devices, then we are talking about how can we uh, measure the performance. So basically, this in yellow box you can see this is the major parameter which is going to influence on the supercapacitor performance. One is specific capacitance. Uh, you know, um, in a capacitor, when we are talking about energy in a capacitor, it's half CV square. Okay, so C is the capacitance, V is the operating potential. And the, when we are talking about the power, V square by uh, 2 ESR or a 2R, uh, its resistance is also one of the important parameters which we are talking about uh, in a power. So this specific capacitance, uh, when you now you have a two electrodes, then ions are interacted uh, into the surface of the electrode, then ions are, these ions are stored in the surface of the material, then there's a charge, charge is developed on the surface, so you are measuring the capacitance. So for measuring the capacitance, mainly we have a GCD measurement, it's called a galvanostatic charging discharging, and also from cyclic voltammetric analysis we can measure, and another is the electrochemical impedance spectroscopic analysis where you can measure your capacitance. Capacitance value depends on the material, the electrolyte, electrode thickness, uh, electrode porosity. Uh, so uh, when you are talking about, when we are thinking about the uh, high performance device, you need to consider all these parameters. Next is uh, operating voltage. As I mentioned you previously, uh, in, a, in a supercapacitor, there is an electrolyte. We know that uh, in a water, the, uh, the decomposition point is 1.3 or 1.31 volt. So uh, when we are applying a, a potential between the electrode, there is an electrolyte also. The electrolyte, we need to avoid the decomposition. So uh, in a normal, if you are taking a, a normal NaCl, it contains a lot of water also. Uh, in addition to that, if you are taking an ionic gel or an organic material, uh, the operating voltage may enhance. If you are increasing the operating voltage from 1 volt to 2 volt, the energy density is significantly changing because of half CV square. It's, it's uh, proportional. Uh, so we are always uh, talk, uh, thinking about how to choose a perfect electrolyte to interact with the electrode. Then that depends on the how you configure the cell. Recently, I noted in one of my work, the cell configuration now significant influence on the performance of operating voltage. I will sh share with you that. Uh, in any, any devices, if you are talking, there is a uh, maximum energy density we can observe as theoretically, but there is a limit also that is called usable energy. So uh, when we are reporting any work, we are thinking about what is the usable energy which we can uh, get from this type of supercapacitor. And the third parameter is resistance. Uh, it's very important parameter in a supercapacitor fabrication. Uh, as I initially I mentioned you, there is a current collector. In this current, this current collector, if it is a resistive material, if it is not passing the, uh, whatever the ions absorbed on the surface, it has strongly influence on the uh, performance of this supercapacitor. Uh, so uh, when, we are when we are making the material, or the electrol electrolyte interaction, the resistance which is offering the electrode or electrode electrolyte is significant in fabrication of supercapacitor. So when in, in future, when you are fabricating a device, consider this, this graph is the, uh, if you are pointing all these parameters, uh, this may lead to a very good research in future. So uh, I already mentioned you, what about the major parameters which we, uh, we, we can measure? So, uh, as I mentioned initially, how a supercapacitor two electrode, and there is an electrode electrolyte interaction. So the electrolyte, electrode electrolyte interaction, mainly the resistance or the how the ions are uh, diffused into the sur surface of the material is high importance. So we we mainly investigating this through electrochemical impedance spectroscopic analysis is called EAS analysis. One of the plot is we are representing it's a Nyquist plot here. You can see here. Uh, this is a complex impedance spectrum. There is a real part of impedance is there and imaginary part of impedance is there. So when you are when you are active electrode material interact with an electrolyte, the electrolyte electrode offers some resistance that is called a solution resistance RS. Then when your ion is absorbed on the surface of the conductive electrode, this ion diffused through the surface of the material and the bulk of the material. If it is a conductive material, you can see here there is a semicircle. If it is a conductive material, this, this resistance may be very low. It's called a charge transfer resistance. 
and also when you have a the surface these ions majority of the super, this electrochemical double layer capacitor the surface reaction is very important that is the electrochemical double layer formation how it is forming an electrochemical double layer so this this straight line you can see the increasing the frequency that that's a, that's a low frequency in the top of the y uh, the y axis uh, in this area where the electrochemical double layer formation occur and that resistance is also very important in the uh, in, in performance of the supercapacitor this is called impedance spectroscopic analysis you can electrically uh, equivalently uh, fit this circuit by using equivalent there, there are many software to explain you this one and then uh, depending on uh, the material another important is the cyclic voltammetric analysis if you are taking electrochemical double layer capacitor that's mainly a graphene based supercapacitor in a graphene based supercapacitor there is no chemical reaction or electrochemical reaction occur on the surface mainly the uh, electrostatically ions are interacted on the surface of the electrode so such a supercapacitor we called double layer formation okay uh, and that is in a double layer formation even though there is no redox reaction you got, you can observe a almost a rectangle uh, rectangular uh, cyclic voltammetry if you observe such a spectrum you can predict that it is a uh, electrochemical double layer but when a metal oxide or a uh, conjugated polymer when a polymer coming into the picture then as an active electrode material then the reaction will change because of there is a redox reaction this is this uh, second spectrum uh, uh, you can see that's a pseudo capacitive when a battery type material there is a strong ionic ions insertion or dis insertion or a interclusion uh, you can see that a strong redox reaction occur it's a battery type cyclic voltammetric analysis you can measure your capacitance from this area under the cv curve uh, and by integrating this area you can calculate the energy density also from this cv spectrum and next is uh, gcd analysis as you know in uh, in our mobile phone or uh, in our major application we know in in a in a back side it is written okay this is the voltage is 3.5 volt or uh, this much of current so we fix the uh, voltage of a device and the charging we applying a, in a in different current density uh, in a constant current if you apply a constant current on the device uh, the energy stored on the, or the charge is uh, charge is uh, stored on the surface of the electrode is called a, a charging you can charge your device and then discharge with that constant current so uh, from here uh, you can measure your uh, capacitance by using uh, this charging discharging analysis and then there is a uh, in a in a in a electrochemical double layer formation there is no redox reaction so it's like a, a triangle you can see here but when there is a redox reaction the discharging or charging curve have a slightly different from the, the electrochemical double layer in bottom you can see this is one of my graph uh, which i want to explain you uh, why i plot this here so in in normal cases previously i mentioned you uh, maybe there is a maximum energy density which is of cv square but it may be not useful because of many parameters one of the point is uh, when you charge your device up to here i i try to charge my device up to 1.4 volt but this electrolyte contain uh, uh, water is the major component so it is not up to from after from 1.4 uh, in in a, in a theoretically it, it is it is slowly decreased to in a discharging but there is a there is a sudden drift it is called ir drift and then you can see here in the bottom there is a tc and td tc means the charging time and td is the discharging time so uh, in a perfect supercapacitor uh, the charging time and discharging time are if you have almost equal we can say that the coulomb efficiency of your device is perfect but even though here you can see the discharging time is quick quick and as compared to charging time then the performance it in, into influence on the performance of the device in the ideal case as you saw in the gcd analysis the first curve you can measure your capacitance if if it is in area i delta t the discharging time divided by voltage operating potential window and area and then ea you can use this but when you are considering this drift you need to change your equations you need to consider that voltage drift also in the expressions so you can check the in details uh, in some of our work also we are trying to investigate how the maximum potential we can observe so uh these are the some of the basics I, as i mentioned you uh, now 
I'm, I, I would like to uh, talk more about uh, what I did in the last three years in this area. Uh, initially, I, I mentioned you, I was working in uh, electrochemical sensors. <clears throat> One of the, sorry. One of the device I developed during that time is pH sensor. Okay. Uh, for example, in a sweat monitoring, wearable application or a uh, uh, sweat monitoring, if you have a diabetic patient uh, or a disease or a skin allergy, uh, one of the best devices is pH sensing or in a wound fluid analysis, wound monitoring, if you have a chronic wound. So the problem I found that uh, for a continuous operation of such a wearable devices, even though it is an ECG monitoring also, uh, whatever, uh, for a continuous monitoring, battery, or a power is one of the critical factor. You can all, you, our health, you cannot connect to our uh, plug point. So uh, an alternative option is required. Such a sensor, pH sensor, normally working in a nanowatt to microwatt power range. Because the, say if it is a chemi resistive, in a chemi resistive, you applied a potential between two electrodes, or a, then the resistance is varying depending on the solution concentration. So I need a constant voltage or a constant current to apply the device. So I observed that uh, this problem can be solved if I integrated with the uh, energy storage there. Then I, I started with uh, how to design an energy storage for applying such a power. Uh, then came the, then this supercapacitor on this energy storage device came to my mind and we, we in our group we started this work and then uh, initially I fabricated a, a graphene form based supercapacitor. Then the issue came how I can charge such a supercapacitor. Uh, it's a small device. Then I integrated with a, a flexible solar cell. This this full version, solar cell, supercapacitor, and pH sensor is fully flexible, and it is called a fully flexible self-powered self power pack uh, for a continuous monitoring. Then uh, this have a this have such a type of such a sensor have a, such a supercapacitor have a limited power or limited energy density due to the operating potential. Uh, because here I am using graphene form and also uh, uh, acidic electrolyte, H3PO4. Then the question will come, uh, this acidic electrolyte may influence on your health. Uh, this, this problem I solved later, I will, I, I will, in, I will share with you how. Uh, here I, I did some packaging, okay, to solve that issue. Then when I need a high operating potential, for example, you can see here in a, in a, in a hand, I, I connected to five LED. Normally, the LED operating triggered 1.5, 1.7 voltage, and it's a high voltage device. And also here you can see in a prosthetic hand or a motor application, I required high power. Such a high power, you need a high power supercapacitor or a high powered energy density, energy storage device. Majority of these graphene-based supercapacitors, or in an aqueous electrolyte, mainly in acidic or alkaline electrolyte, uh, reported, reported as a 1.2 is the maximum operating voltage. Then the electrolyte is replaced with organic electrolyte, but then there is a problem came the life cycle or the issues. So uh, I was investigating how I can solve this issue because we are working in a field called a prosthetic hand. Uh, in the prosthetic hand, the motor circuit uh, almost six voltage and to actuate that finger, that actuator. Then uh, I developed a supercapacitor which can operate up to 2.2 voltage in aqueous electrolyte. That is then a new cell configuration is required. We, uh, I developed, we developed a new composite material. It's called a graphite polyurethane composite. And this technology we patented, uh, patented and we filed for patent. Then uh, I will explain you that work also here today uh, in a shortly. And then uh, as I mentioned you previously, the electrolyte. Here also I used the H3PO4 as an electrolyte. Uh, the solar acidic electrolyte. So when we are to, when we are talking about the wearables, when we need to uh, wearables, if we are using again an acidic, it may if there is a crack or a leakage, it it, it is the other than positive negatively it affect our health. To solve to solve that issue, what I did that uh, you know in human uh, we we know we we sweating a lot, especially in India and uh, we sweating a lot. Uh, so. The sweat contain uh, majority of the sweat is water, but 90 percentage when we are talking about the elements in the sweat, 90 percentage of the sweat contain sodium chloride, Na plus Cl, Na and Cl. So there's a positive and a negative ion. 
I was initially working in a set based sensor. So I observed that when I, in a set based potentiometric sensor, it generates, it, 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 that is a potential difference observed. So it's like a battery. Uh, so why not we can consider that positive or negative ions to operate supercapacitor? So then we need a new material. So this is our recent work. We investigated human sweat can be used as an electrolyte in supercapacitor. So I will discuss with you all these three work very shortly. So uh, this is the first work, graphene form based supercapacitor. Okay. So uh, as a master degree student, if you are planning to apply for a fellowship, as like a Marie Curie fellowship and everything, uh, publication is one of the most important factor when you apply for a fellowship. So uh, to get a publication or to get a good result, uh, you can easily start in your master degree laboratory uh, to fabricate a new supercapacitor device. Uh, there is not much uh, complication here. Uh, you can easily do. Only thing you need is that an electrochemical work station, which can measure impedance spectroscopic analysis, cyclic voltammetry, and uh, GCD analysis. All other studies like a structural or you can easily collaborate or easily easily do in, in, in majority of the laboratory contain some analysis or exactly. So we can check how can we fabricate a supercapacitor now here in step by step. Okay, uh, initially I started with a PVC as a substrate and then a binder and any binder on a, any epoxy you can use. I used the polyurethane. Polyurethane is very suitable and it is normally used in our textiles, uh, textiles application. Um, many application we can use this PU binder. Then I attached a graphene sheet. You can use aluminium foil also here, depending on your electrolyte. After uh, this graphene sheet, I found that in a graphene, uh, it is a high surface, that surface is smooth and hydrophobic. Uh, the performance of a pure graphene sheet is low. To solve that issue, uh, there are many work, uh, Professor Ajayan Pulikar and everything explained very well, very well about the carbon nanotube. There are many work on to enhance the uh, uh, electrochemical double layer capacitor by using uh, carbon nanotube and everything. Another very good option is a graphene form. Why form is that? Form is a 3D structured na na network, nanostructured network, and it's a high conductive path work also. So when an electrolyte, uh, as I mentioned to you in initially, the in a supercapacitor, electrode electrolyte interaction or the surface area have a critical important parameter so in a 3d form the surface area is very large so what happened is that uh, i need to attach a graphene form on the top of a graphene sheet normally traditionally mainly the work is doing that uh, they are preparing a graphene form by using a insulative epoxy uh, that can that that reduces our resistance that that increases the resistance sorry increase the resistance to solve that issue, what I used with that in a graphene sheet, I used a normal silver epoxy. It's a conductive epoxy. Then a freestanding graphene form. There is no insulative material inside. Uh, I used a freestanding graphene form attached on the top of this uh, graphene sheet, as you can see here. And then in one side, I applied an electrode for external current collector and then an insulative epoxy to protect that and then drop an electrolyte here. As you can see here, the top figure is a graphene sheet and a graphene form structure. You can see here a 3D network structure and then porosity because these ions can easily involve, uh, diffuse into the material. So porosity analysis is one of the most important thing. You can use BET. Here I used an image software. And then I noted that you can see in this video, uh, when, uh, when I drop an electrolyte on the top of this uh, graphene form, um, Slowing, you can see here it is. Yes, you can see here it is equally distributed on the uh, surface of this graphene form. And here you can see a cross section of the device. And when you applied a potential between these two electrode, you can see here that in this graphene form it contains a lot of 3D structured network and each. Conductive path, positive or negative ions are there. From the electrolyte, depending on the polarity, these ions are absorbed or, or, or attracted on the surface of this electrode. Uh, as you seen here, that uh, I used a phosphoric acid as an electrolyte. It contains positive or negative ions, and this positive or negative ions interact on the surface. Then, uh, initially, I told you I am using graphene or a carbon. It may have a rectangular CV, but here I observed a redox reaction. This redox reaction is came mainly from 
the material which I used is silver because uh, the uh, graphene form is a highly porous, so the electrolyte easily uh, reacted with the, uh, the silver silver filling, and I observed that that enhanced my performance. And uh, uh, as you can see here, the imprint spectroscopic analysis, the insect you can see that insect you can see that uh, from zero to uh, two point five. The solution resistance is a oh, very a very very minor resistance, so it is we can say it's negligible. And the charge transfer that semicircle is uh, again one ohm. So ions can easily diffuse into the surface of the electrode and easily absorb on the surface. And you can see that from the different frequency range, uh, the capacitance started from 1.2 farad to uh, in the in the low frequency. And here you can see. Depending on this uh, material, you can the charging, discharging analysis. As you can see here, that it's not a perfect rectangular and a triangle. It's a, it's a, there is a redox reaction. And then aerial capacitance. I observed a aerial capacitance of uh, nearly 32 millifarad per centimeter square for this device, and energy density of 3.2 microwatt per hour centimeter square. And one of the important and interesting thing I found that it is operating more than 25,000 cycles of charging discharging. And you can see here the last final cycle. Uh, in this work, my colleagues Carlos, uh, Bendin, and uh, Professor Dahia, we, we combinedly did this work. And uh, here, I, how I integrated this with the uh, graphene form with the solar cell. So you can see here in a cloudy at, uh, atmosphere, how the charging, and in a sunny atmosphere, how the charging in a sunny atmosphere, then when the in solar cell, maybe majority of them, you know how the principle of solar cell. And you can see here, I attached this uh, this uh, sensor here. You can see in the beaker, I attached a pH sensor there and a commercial pH sensor. And there, you can see here the supercapacitor in the, in the bench. And I was charging the supercapacitor. Using the supercapacitor, we, I provided the potential to the sensor. And you can see the performance of the sensor here. And this is the fully integrated pack, a solar cell and a, a GFSC and a pH sensor. It's a chemi-resistive pH sensor. It's when we applied a potential, there is a resistance variation. And this work uh, published in Nano Energy in 2018. Then, uh, then next work, uh, as I mentioned you, I, I required a high operating potential. Uh, so in this case, I, I tried to synthesize a new material. It's called a graphite polyurethane composite. Uh, the process is initially same as the previous one. As you can see here, a PET substrate or a PVC substrate. Uh, your PU and then your graphene sheet here. Uh, in majority of my work, I used a graphene sheet as a current collector. But in many work, you can see aluminum foil. Why I use graphene sheet as that a graphene sheet can also contribute in somehow in our performance of the supercapacitor due to its electrochemical double layer performance. And then uh, I prepared this graphene graphite polyurethane composite. Uh, initially, I started with a different ratio. Uh, then uh, depending on because the polyurethane is an insulative material and depending on the resistance and uh, trade-off, uh, I, I found that one is to one ratio. Uh, I got a better resistant, better conductivity of this material. And here I printed that conductive material on the top of this graphene sheet. And then here what I did that day, in traditionally supercapacitor separator as used as a in between the electrode. So what I used with that, day, I wrap around the electrode, this separator. So, in, in performance of, for enhancing the supercapacitor performance, wettability is one of the critical factors. To increase the wettability, your separator is always, if your separator is always wet, uh, or uh, keep long time, uh, you can improve your performance or a life cycle. So what I used that, I use a cellulose polyester band. It's a cloth. So in that a cloth, it can always wet and easily hold long time the electrolytes. So then I developed three types of supercapacitor initially for a comparison, just a graphene sheet only, and then graphite polyurethane only, and then a, a parallel electrode configuration, as you can see here, a graphene sheet and a GS, GSGPU. Uh, initially, I characterized all the contact angle measurement a graphene sheet. You can see here the hydrophobic nature and almost the contact angle is 73. So, uh, that is another important parameter in, in supercapacitor. When you are when the electrolyte is not distributing, your performance is less. Uh, but when the electrolyte easily uh, distributed on the surface, if you have a rough surface, uh, you can see here the performance is uh, enhancing. So the material graphite polyurethane composite material is a highly rough surface, 
and then uh, almost 32 uh, micrometer as you can see, see from the EFM analysis. And then what happened is that initially uh, the electrolyte is distributed all, all around the electrode as you can see here the carbon network, uh, graphene network and then uh, when you started to apply in the second figure, started to apply the potential, uh, you can see that there is an ion movement started and when you fully charged, uh, you can see there the, in, a, in a negative electrode positive ions are stored there and a positive electrode negative ions are stored there. So uh, this GSSE, GSSE means graphene based supercapacitor. Um, when I applied a potential, as I mentioned you, there is a charge storing. Due to this hydrophobic nature, uh, the charge or the current uh, stored on the surface is in the micro ampere range, you can see here. Uh, then I used a GPU, graphite polyurethane, due to this resistive material, but it's a rough surface. Uh, it further enhanced the uh, charging, sto charging storage capability. Uh, it's, as you can see here, it's reaching the milliampere range. But when I use this GS GPU combo, that, that layered configuration, uh, you can see here that uh, it stored more energy as compared to graphene sheet. Uh, my colleagues, uh, William and uh, Carlos, so first they're here, supported in this work. Uh, and uh, it is published in advanced science. Uh, you can see here. Initially, I, I, I mentioned you, when you have a graphene or a carbon, almost a rectangle uh, uh, CV you can observe in ideal case. But here in experimental, I observed almost a rectangle, but there is in low scanning rate, you can see still there are some chemical reaction on the surface of the material. Um, this, uh, this uh, I'm now trying to investigate what are the other mechanism can happen here. Uh, and then you can see here the how uh, impedance spectroscopic analysis in the low frequency range you can see that it's almost uh, my, uh, 10, 10 ohm that means that uh, solution conduct resistance is very low uh, it may enhance our performance as you can see here the in capacitance wise how the de uh, devices when GSSC only uh, it's not zero it's a logarithmic scale uh, it's uh, sorry uh, in a, uh, it's almost in a micro farad range the capacitor uh, and then you can see here the from the charging discharging analysis uh, the uh, with increasing the potential or the current density you can see that uh, it's almost going to 2.5 volt but there is a ir drop here and then after i considering the ir drop i used it 2.2 volt and here you, when you compare the uh, performance of these three different super capacitors you, say, you can see that in a low frequency range how the resistance value uh, in ideal case if you want to high performance this uh, resistance the 16 ohm to 84 uh, ohm, 849 ohm. Uh, if it is very low, your performance increases very, very high. And solution resistance is very low, as you can see here. Uh, phase angle, uh, as you know, in capacitor, uh, as compared to inductor, uh, phase angle. If the if the uh, uh, phase angle between the device, uh, IV in IV voltage, it's a 90, 90 uh, minus 90 degree. You can see that it's a 77 and 83. And the capacitance is an ideal case, but we observed in the minus 77 for a GS GPU. That depends on the electrode performance as well. And capacitance is almost uh, as compared to GSSE, uh, you can see here 60 millifarad. And then in aerial capacitance at a fixed voltage for a 1.1 volt, you can see that the device shows 2.21 um, uh, microwatt hour per centimeter square. But in the case of an, I observed that in the case of a uh, um, device with a 2.2 uh, volt, I observed almost 10 microwatt hour per centimeter square for the energy density of this device. Then uh, in a wearable application, uh, another major important point is that uh, um, we need to measure the cyclic bending or a, on a dynamic or a static bending. You can see here, uh, the here we attached the supercapacitor uh, in a to fixed plate and then it's moving and during this cyclic bending you can see the charging discharging analysis and it's almost 24 mm uh, radius we bend the device uh, in a continuous 100 cycles and uh, i noted that there is not the much difference in the performance and almost the same, same almost same performance i noted so the cyclic bending is not affecting our device and also i carried out the uh, the Normal bending, as you can see here, that in a 20 mm uh, radius and uh, also 10 mm radius. Then, such a supercapacitor, uh, after fabricating, I integrated with a, uh, you can see here, uh, you can see here this green box, 
uh, the 3D printed box, I inserted the supercapacitor and uh, charged by using a solar cell. And here I connected to uh, 84 LEDs. And then after the fully charging by using the solar cell, these two devices, I, I discharged through the cell LED, as you can see here, how it is operating. Uh, and then uh, here you can see here at uh, three motors, each motor is required almost 2.5 volt. And uh, here I, I wrap around this supercapacitor in a, in a, in a tube here, you can see here, and then charge it up to three volt and then uh, discharging through uh, other fully charged, uh, discharging through this uh, motor. As you can see here, that it quickly deliver the power to the device. And then uh, here in a wearable application for, a, for example, in a prosthetic hand, uh, you can see here that uh, this is a manicure and uh, we designed in our group, uh, uh, our researchers designed this prosthetic hand and uh, here we integrated this, this super capacitor in the, on the hand and uh, surrounded by using a solar cell. You can see that uh, how the fingers uh, hold for the powering these fingers, we power by using the solar cell and this holding the object, um, any soft object uh, that depends on the uh, we integrated in our work, we integrated electronic skin also here uh, because it is not, we don't need to apply too much pressure on the, on the surface of that holding object. Here you can see the various application which we did. When we, when we're talking about a similar application, for example, in a, a pulse rate monitoring, normally in a pulse rate monitoring sensors, so you can, you need a almost 1.5 volt. So this is showing that uh, such a type of wearable application you can use as a wristband supercapacitor this one and uh, in uh, so you can see here the various demonstration already used and this is my um, recent work here as i mentioned you uh, this is a, uh, an, a human set how human set can be used as an electrolyte in supercapacitor in this work uh, initially i started with a, a graphene graphene version but then i noted that uh, um, graphene is not much giving performance due to um, uh, electrode electrolyte interaction and uh, absorbance of set is another important parameter so what i used that i used our cloth so when we are running cloth easily absorbs set but normal cloth is uh, not a super capacitor uh, not a super capacitor we need to convert that into a super capacitive electrode why what i used that i have a cellulose polyester cloth and I convert that non-conductive cloth into conductive by using a P dot PSS as a, um, as a uh, conductive material. You can see here, it's a low temperature process and then um, coated on both sides and then electrode deposited and then stacked. You can see, you can see here uh, an insulative epoxy applied on the electrode deposition. Uh, here you can see that uh, how the device, the cloth, it's an image of the cloth and then a fiber each each fiber in the cloth absorbed the electrolyte and uh, is equally distributed on the uh, cloth fiber. And then you can see here such a cloth contain uh, because this P dot PSS is a conjugated polymer, it's a conductive polymer also. Uh, due to this PSS, it's an insulative, but we are using a DM also uh, to increase the uh, conductivity of the P, P dot PSS. And then there is a network for uh, ion conduction. And then you can see here such a cloth, two identical cloth uh, bonded together. And uh, again, I used a separator. Because why I used this uh, human sweat? Uh, this is a point I told you initially, uh, eco-friendly or environmental friendly. So we can avoid uh, such a strong electrolyte using a uh, biocompatible electrolyte for such an application. So what happened is that uh, in a sweat, when you apply the potential, so it contain a lot of Na plus in the bottom figure you can see Na plus or K plus or water H plus ions. So these ions can interact or can absorb on the surface of this electrode. So basically two mechanism can happen. One is electrochemical double layer formation. And initially I mentioned you about how, what is the electrochemical double layer? Uh, when a conductive substrate, when a conductive material is there, uh, depending on the applied polarity, the ions from the electrolyte absorbed on or diffused on the surface. Then it forms an inner almost layer or an outer almost layer, it's called a diffuse layer. And then in there is a bulk layer. And depending on the polarity, you can see here, these ions are absorbed on the surface. And when the ions uh, diffuse into the material, what happened is that this conjugated polymer, there is a redox reaction occur. 
due to this material p.pss and uh, here bottom you can see the uh, the schematic representation of this device um, um, initially uh, i divide I, I fabricated in various size and it's a three centimeter uh, 1.5 centimeter length you can see it's a bendability also then uh, initially i started with a human set equivalent solution you can prepare set equivalent solution by using nacl uh, citric acid or uh, uh, chemical composition in my paper i explained what are the chemical composition i used i tested with a uh, set equivalent solution you can see that uh, in impedance spectroscopic analysis the solution resistance is less than 10 ohm and uh, the diffusion the in a high frequency range as in low frequency range also resistance is in a 40 ohm or at 300 the in capacitive impedance is 300 ohm so the resistance is very low and you can see here the uh, up to different in the various voltages in a set equivalent solution how the cyclic voltammetry almost a rectangular uh, uh, peak but depending on um, in a in a scan rate because normally when we are doing the cyclic voltammetric analysis we need to scan the device from very low scan rate because then when you, if you do the very low scan rate then you can see the how the material or the ions diffuse into the bulk of the material and a fully chemical reaction uh, so in such a reaction you can see it's a cauchy rectangular shape and in the paper i explained that uh, due to this redox reaction and then you can see here the charging discharging analysis how the charging discharging analysis of it. and uh, then there is a question came um, when we are using any human sweat maybe uh, depending on the person uh, the amount of sweat may vary so initially i noted that even though there is no uh, not much sweat without sweat the device is in the pike of Faraday range like almost very low but when you are sweating then you are you are doing the charging discharging also when you are sweating the ions content is increasing and uh, you can see here it's almost reaching the microfarad range and here this is a real human sweat i we did the test and then here the cauchy rectangular shape and also uh, uh, you can see the charging discharging analysis so uh, as i mentioned you depending on the person depending on the physiological condition depending on the disease or uh, uh, depending on the uh, place for example in glasgow it's always cold so getting sweat is very difficult so uh, i carried out in a different volume concentration 20 microliter uh, of volume and you can see here in a 20 microliter the resistance is very high 800 ohm but with increasing the volume of sweat you can see the reduction in the resistance and also the phase angle you can see phase angle means that the capacitance almost reaches minus 80 and the rectangular the more uh, volume of the sweat is there the 100 microliter you can see almost a perfect rectangular shape so uh, volume of sweat is highly important then then there is a uh, in some cases maybe uh, sweating is not easy so there are recently many report using ionotrophoresis method you can extract sweat from your body uh, there is that method also um, this is a very uh, good future in that type of research i think uh, uh, there is not much work done in that area uh, you can you can absorb you can extract your sweat and power your device here uh, then uh, the question will come uh, why when we are using a human sweat maybe that sweat can evaporate very easily as we noted that when we run and our shirt get wet and then uh, what happened after after evaporation to, to solve that issue what i did that day, initially you can see the initial cycle here uh, i dropped the sweat on the electrolyte the electrode and i did the analysis you can see the resistance is less than 10 ohm or a perfect charging discharging almost 33 point charging time second and a, a 31 point discharging time then after 4000 cycle i again measure i, I did this continuous measurement I noted that the charging discharging time is decreased and the resistance is increased. So uh, I just opened my device. I found that the electrolyte is evaporated almost. The set is evaporated. But after 4000 cycle, you can see still showing some performance. And that means that uh, that is a content of small ions that's there that, that, that enhance our performance. So uh, I, I was thinking what happened uh, actually, uh, there is any problem in the electrolyte or electrode. Then I did the same analysis also. Then I noted that uh, the surface of the material due to this redox reaction, the material got some uh, uh, disintegration and uh, some chemical reaction occurred. Then uh, I again dropped the electrolyte and checked the performance. Uh, I noted it's showing performance, but not that much as an initial cycle. 
That means that the material stability on the top of this cloth have a strong influence. So we did only period PSS. There is a huge opportunity for you. We can think about next material, which you can work on a long time and with good interaction with the set. Uh, and you can see here that uh, um, another important thing is that washability. Uh, when you wash your dress, whether it will sustain or not. I did washing test also in a soap water and a hot water. And I found that after one or two cycles, there is some disintegration because of the P dot PSS can react with the water molecule and uh, easily dissolved there. So uh, we need to solve that issue also in the future work. And uh, I did all spending analysis as well. And here you can see in a real condition how uh, the such based supercapacitor can work. Uh, one of my um, co-author and uh, my colleague, uh, uh, we attach, you can see that, uh, you can see here in the t-shirt, there is a black, that is a white version. That is the supercapacitor when we are doing the treadmill uh, during sweating, you can see here charging, discharging, a perfect charging, discharging of the device. And the device is working perfectly in a human sweat. We, in a real demo, we used that. And then uh, you can see here that, uh, as I mentioned you initially, uh, with increasing the sweat content in a human, uh, this is another my colleague um, uh, during the treadmill when starting the uh, when starting the exercise uh, with, the, with the increasing the sweat. You can see here um, we attached here. One of the good thing is that uh, in this device in in here uh, we know during the uh, for a heart rate monitoring normally we attach the body in a, in a body there is a sensor is there. So in that, uh, that strip, we attached our supercapacitor. So this, in, in this case, we attached on the body actually. So uh, it's directly interact with the in that cloth. Uh, one of the good thing is that uh, here, there are two cloth, okay? In between the separator, the separator is wrap around. So your electrode is not touching on your body. Only the cloth is touching. So what happened is that uh, when sweat is coming due to the capillary rise or uh, the uh, cloth easily absorb the sweat and it distributes around the electrode. So you don't need to worry about oh, this electrode may touch my body and it may affect. So nothing will happen. Uh, so you can see here uh, the capacitance stability almost uh, stable in the capacitance. Uh, there is a drift here it is due to the electrode connection. Okay. Uh, capacitance is almost stable. And then what we did that we integrated this with a solar cell and a supercapacitor and a sensor again, and then check the salinity. Here I measured the uh, salinity presence of a human body uh, uh, to measure the sensor. And you can see here the device performance. This is my three device. As you can see here, uh, initially I mentioned you how the cyclic voltammetry, when there is a silver form or a graphene form is there, uh, in, a, in a silver, there is a redox reaction and you can see here uh, that work. And then when we compare our graphene form based device work, we can say that uh, it is not, I'm not, I'm not reached the, uh, the performance of a hybrid supercapacitor or a, a pseudo capacitor, uh, but, uh, pretty good value I reached as compared to graphene based work. And uh, you can see here in our work, how our, our, our distinguish and it's showing a good performance and it's published in 2018. And this work we received uh, in UK University Research Category, Electra, it's an industrial award in 2016, 2018, best university research category award. And then in graphene sheet, you can see almost rectangular shape here. And then uh, how our work is distinguished from the uh, reported work on graphene or carbon-based supercapacitor. This is published in 2019 and uh, uh, we now searching for a um, commercial opportunity and uh, we got an innovative UK fund for to uh, searching this and uh, we patented a file. And then this is cellulose cloth as a supercapacitor uh, and then our work how still we need to reach a we didn't reach that level of a normal electrolyte, acidic or alkaline electrolyte, but pretty good value uh, and uh, for operating as small devices in wearable application. And we, uh, this work, I'm very happy to share with you. Recently in BBC Science Focus magazine selected the best uh, 22 ideas which is going to change in the world. Uh, and one of the second work is, uh, the second work is our work related to this supercapacitor. So the question will come. Uh, what is next? So uh, this is one of the important thing where we can focus in future. And I believe uh, one of the most important area we, where we can focus is that uh, sustainable energy. 
because why sustainable energy initially i mentioned you technical economic social environmental we need when, when we need to consider all these parameters i may say that currently you know there are many wearable energy storage system of huge importance because uh, currently we are finding difficulty to go to hospital due to this uh, corona situation so self health management is one of the most important parameter must one of the most important thing for example diabetes monitoring you need your wearable devices so you need a power source there if you are fabricating such a power source which is basically from a sustainable material for example cellulose cloth and a con con compatible conductive electrode so it is not affecting our health it is not affecting our environment and in future as i mentioned you we need a 500 watt hour per kilogram energy density alternative materials is very important so we can find an alternative material here so i believe sustainable energy storage is future scope and my dream personally i need to reach here i know it's very far but in future i believe i can able to reach there by using uh, material engineering we can say and electrochemistry electrochemical engineering and here is my is our group and our group leader for sudahia is here and our website is i am provided here and the fund is uh, mercury and uh, i am working in a mercury project now currently uh, i am that project is mainly focusing on water quality monitoring environmental quality monitoring especially water quality monitoring so what we are doing that we are fabricating sensors and uh, integrate the sensor in a robot and uh, to a different uh, reverse area to monitor uh, attaching and i am working as a project manager scientific project manager in this project and we have different institute involved in this and uh, uh, my colleagues uh, uh, who are supporting this work is also presented here and uh, the various funding and we have a serb india nutan collaboration royal society fund epsrc if you are planning to apply any fellowship or something you can contact you can check the possibility and this is uh, and last i want to uh, show you one uh, announce we are uh, now focusing on a special issue where i am a co-guest editor uh, it's uh, one of the important journal called ieee internet of things journal it's in back factor of almost 10 if you are planning to publish any work related to environmental water quality monitoring you can see you can consider this journal and uh, this here submission deadline you can see and more details thank you so much thank you dr libu that was a wonderful and detailed presentation of super capacitors in the year 2000 uh, i read in newspapers the predictions of the century was uh, uh, the air conditioned dress like uh, air conditioned shirt air conditioned churidar like that no need of external air conditioners even your dress itself can be uh, make air condition so you will feel comfortable so it is uh, uh so it is question time now so i will give the five category peoples in that priority first uh, any university professors then any college professors then any research scholars then any postgraduate students then any undergraduate students so in that order you can ask any questions is there any university professors we please self introduce yourself and ask questions just to open your video and audio and ask self hello is it audible yes please yeah dr Libu, uh, my question is that whatever you have talked about the super capacitors yes. so is it possible to fabricate these sort of variable super capacitor with some pvd techniques physical vapor deposition techniques yeah <laughs> this is a good question you reminded me <laughs> because um, uh, i i didn't explain much about the uh, fabrication technology here um, I'm, I'm speaking from Bits Pilani. I'm assistant professor here in Bits Pilani, Dr. Satyendra Maurya. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You pointed a very well good question. Because uh, 
see uh, initially I, I avoided that slide actually it was there in my slide previously because of okay, lack of no, time no actually it was quite uh, informative as well but uh, the part was missing related to fabrication yes yes i know i know i know because uh, i i due to lack of time i thought it may be i, I will explain you now okay mm -hmm. see uh, in fabrication technology uh, mm -hmm. supercapacitor when you want to fabricate a supercapacitor um, the first I, I told you initially i mentioned you material category okay and the electrolyte mm -hmm. you can choose different material and then mm -hmm. when you are fabricating a supercapacitor uh, in film technology physical de vapor deposition or a uh, sol gel method or a chemical vapor deposition in any technology you can give a good surface property of the material uh, right. you can easily adopt that material that method and one of the interesting method is i used the screen printing technology okay screen printing right. technology have a advantage and disadvantage also because there is a binder there uh, so that may influence on your material surface uh, material resistance mm -hmm. so such a physical deposition method maybe this can be avoided like a chemical vapor deposition or a uh, physical vapor deposition so if you can easily because in one thin film technology thin, when we, you can use such a substrate or a flexible or a textile substrate in your chamber if you can easily deposit your such a any metal any metal there or a metal oxide there in a mm -hmm. for example hafnium oxide or a vanadium oxide or a, a metal oxide material on the top of the substrate uh, you can use such a method uh, uh, such a fabrication method huh? like a gel okay. method physical method okay. Ow, ow, ow. Uh, and then um, after you in a, in a fabrication um, you need to think about uh, how you are planning to in a sub current collector you can use aluminium sheet or in a, on whatever the substrates you copper foil also you can take and then physically deposit your active electrode material this metal oxide on the top of the substrate and then uh, you can choose your electrolyte or electrode or a separator then when you are characterizing the material uh, you need to first cross check when you are physically deposit a material how the surface looks like it's a rough surface how the porosity looks like or the because surface area nano structured material uh, one of the best option uh, you can choose as a electrode deposition also or an uh, electrode deposition you can control your uh, material surface uh, property like when you have a uh, if, if, i initially i did one work on a uh, nano rectangle and a nano flower based electrochemical application and i found that uh, depending on the surface area of the material if it is a nano rectangle or a nano tube there are a lo lot of in the nano tube uh, the electrode electrolyte interaction is large because of the surface area surface to volume ratio so when you are physically deposit any material think about what is the surface area of the nano structures uh, or the uh, porosity uh, so you can use this method also it's a well, well method also you can for application i hope Hello? you oh. yes. any any college process process from any college or research college research college please or any postgraduate student hello 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 sir uh, hello 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 you can ask. i am audible sir hello. Yes, yes, yes yes please hello i am a postgraduate student yes sir, okay. i am also a student in electronics communication engineering wait one one please one one at a time please hello yeah please ah, okay you can good afternoon, sir. good afternoon sir i am from odisha state india uh, mm -hmm. i am a mtech in uh, electronics communication engineering uh, being signal processing communication specification mm -hmm. and now interested to phd in the research mm -hmm. work Yes. So this uh, superconductor is an innovative idea. Give me for using so many communication devices. As we are using so many wireless communication devices. Yes. So that. So I am interested. So how can I proceed upwards? Yeah. So kind this of is it. Uh, very good. Uh, I will. I, I will explain. Okay. Okay. See. Uh, uh, 
now currently uh, because uh, sorry i forgot his name but uh, he pointing a, a very good question actually i i can tell you the reason okay uh, in wearable application wearable application we are considering senses you know there are many senses but when we uh, talking about in a wearables not only record sensor you need to monitor your sensing parameter in a in a, in a system where or a display or in a mobile phone we developed one of the app for a for such application so where you need to transfer your data whatever the data you observed from the sensor you need to transfer that data data into your communication portal or in a mobile phone so communication system or that antenna or the bla means bluetooth low frequency uh, whatever uh, you need to power that device also so uh, you can think about uh, uh, you unmuted me okay um, there are many uh, fellowship options are there where uh, you can apply for a uh, uh, positions for or in an explain that uh, okay uh, uh, i am mainly working in a communication field where the power is one of the crucial important factor if you want to focus on this energy this power management circuit uh, in a super capacitor area uh, you can easily design because power management in this in a energy system technology there are three components energy generator energy storage and the power management so all are equally important so there is a good chance for power management circuit where uh, or a communication system where you can use such a super capacitor or a wearable device because i told you initially there is a usable energy or a, we need to extract the usable energy uh, one of the problem of the mini super capacitor is that self discharge so you need to control your device you need to make electronics design for to to to, to tune your performance so, uh, think about the fellowship opportunities like a mercury fellowship or a, a exchange program or a, uh, there are many fellowship opportunity or many position you can see and uh, think about this area if you need any any personal help you can contact me in any other questions or mevin can you speak few words Maybe can you? Sorry, maybe I, I can answer one question here, uh, Saju. Uh, there okay, is a okay. question related to um, uh, I think Bhuvaneshwari ji. Uh, I have prepared bismuth oxide thin film with aluminium, and I have done imprint spectroscopic analysis. Um, so uh, my my answer is that uh, imprint spectroscopic analysis you can easily this bismuth based material in a thin film uh, uh, you can easily uh, analyze the imprint spectrum uh, because. you this thin film uh, you already deposited on a current current collector like aluminium film on a bismuth oxide film bismuth oxide is a metal oxide film so uh, think about the check about the electrolyte which electrolyte you can use and uh, you can make it as energy storage device and uh, i believe uh, you can easily done this okay one question is related to software uh, in a electrochemical work i hope you have time shaju shaju Okay, yeah, yeah, we have time. Yeah. But uh, if you are free, one, you can uh, you can answer many few more yeah. questions. Yeah. One 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 more question. They are asking about the software. Yes, there are many softwares in you can available. But the perfect software, I must say, if you are planning to purchase any electrochemical workstation, there are inbuilt some softwares are there. Uh, there are some free softwares that may be available. Uh, but in 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 electrochemical imprint spectroscopic analysis or in electrochemical workstation, when we purchase, you can find. Uh, there uh, uh uh tools for uh, operating and uh, some more uh, okay let's go are super capacitors require less power to charge okay uh, this depends on the type of material you used okay uh, for example if you are using graphene foam uh, you need only very less power micro ampere current is required for to charge but when you are using a metal oxide material or a pseudo capacitor material or a hybrid super capacitor you may required high power to charge these are all are, all are i think uh, good questions are there uh, maybe if you need more maybe i can i can and help you in sending so one thing you. we can do is we will upload this video in our uh, college open courseware youtube channel christ open courseware youtube channel so you can type your questions there so so that uh, dr libu will 
uh, answer it later according to his convenience okay so let us wind up this because we are almost almost one and a half hours uh, dr libu may be tired after all this <laughs> after this lengthy talk so uh, we are going to conclude this webinar for that uh, i um, mevin can you can you hear mevin mevin vincent is the person yeah i can I can hear. Yeah, maybe in, can you can you uh, speak few words? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Shah Sir, for giving a chance for few words. Dr. Libu, he is uh, kind of a great person for me. Uh, he helped me a lot for landing a PhD position now in Spain. He is kind of a, a good motivation person. He is always trying to people to move towards um, the area of research. he has a good passion for research and uh, for getting more knowledge uh, and it is my pleasure to introduce him to my uh, parent college in their good uh, in their uh, occasion of jubilee year so many thanks uh, dr libu for accepting the invitation and also uh, i'm so happy with my department also thank you all okay thank you mevin now we move on to the water tank session dr xavier joseph the convener of the program will say the water tank over to xavier dr xavier please good afternoon one and all the as a convener of this webinar it's my privilege to express my sincere gratitude to one and all all of the participants so respected principal governor dr jolie andrews respected resource person dr libu manjekal head of the department dr kv shaju dear participants and my dear friends department of physics of christ college kirinyalapuda is celebrating the diamond jubilee this year and as part of this we are conducting a webinar series and this one is the second one in this series today we are lucky to just have a very interesting informative talk by dr libu manjakal on super capacitors or wearable energy storage systems he is associated with bus group department of electronics and nanoscale engineering university of glasgow united kingdom he has he has explained clearly the different type of capacitors super capacitors different aspects to be taken care of when designing a super capacitor and he has also shared uh, his views or his ideas or work in the near uh, in the past 3 years and uh, see we can see that these are very interesting and very very uh, good research work which can change our future so thank you dr libu manjakal for accepting our invitation and giving us this nice lecture thank you dr libu manjakal thank you so much thank you so much for i saw it and and happy to okay thank you sir now i would like to thank dr pravin father dr jolly andros our principal for extending all his support for arranging this webinar he is very supportive in all our activities and i am happy to tell you once again that he is also from the physics department thank you father thank you so much thank you thank you dr libu thank you never thank you father thank you next i wish to thank dr kavesh charju the vice principal and head of the department of physics who is a backbone of all the activities of the department actually he took all the pains and effort for the smooth conduct of this webinar thank you sir welcome welcome sir i also wish to place my sincere thanks to all the esteemed participants for joining this seminar as this webinar and making it a fruitful event so there are nearly uh, 500 participants were there so we are happy to have such a huge audience for the webinar thank you all of you now i would like to express my special thanks to mr mevin binsent he is a former student for extending that is helping hand in arranging this webinar and he is uh, connecting the link between us and the uh, and the resource person dr libu thank you mr mevin thank you very much thanks finally i wish to thank all my colleagues in the department 
especially Dr. Sudhir Sabaskin, Mr. Edwin Jose, Mr. Jose Sunni, and all the technical staff of the college and uh, my dear other uh, colleagues in the department for their active support and making this a grand success. Thank you all. So thanking you all once again, let me conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Lipu. Thank you, Thank all. You, Thank you, Dr. Shadjo. You Very nice, you. nice lecture. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye to all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you once again, Dr. Libu. Thank you.